Good morning and welcome to all to this morning prayer on Wednesday the 12th of May as we continue through this Easter season. Today for our Rogation Day remember those who work on the land and the sea and we also commemorate the life and work of Gregory Dix. Born in 1901, some one of our more modern commemorations today, George Dix was educated at Westminster School and Merton College, Oxford. After ordination to a fellowship at Keble College, Oxford, he taught history before entering the novitiate of the Benedictine community at Pershaw, taking the name Gregory. Shortly afterwards, the community moved to Nashtham in Buckinghamshire, where Dix eventually made his life profession and was appointed prior. Dix was one of the most influential figures of a generation of Anglo-Catholics who worked enthusiastically towards reunion with Rome. A gifted and popular preacher and spiritual director, Dix is best remembered as a liturgical scholar whose monumental work, The Shape of the Liturgy, has had an unparalleled influence over liturgical study and revision since it was first published in 1945. He died on this day in 1952. In fact, I have a copy of his book on my bookcase. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. In your resurrection, O Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. Blessed to you, Lord God of our salvation, to you be praise and glory for ever, as once you ransomed your people from Egypt and led them to freedom in the promised land. So now you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your risen Son. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in this new day you have made and praise you for your mighty acts. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The Easter Anthems Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us, so let us celebrate the feast not with the old leaven of corruption and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Christ, once raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. In dying, he died to sin once for all. In living, he lives to God. See yourselves, therefore, as dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who sleep. For as by man came death, by man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, send in the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. Our psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 132. Arise, O Lord, into your resting place. Lord, remember for David all the hardships he endured, how he swore an oath to the Lord and vowed a vow to the mighty one of Jacob. I will not come within the shelter of my house, nor climb up into my bed. I will not allow my eyes to sleep, nor let my eyelids slumber, until I find a place for the Lord, a dwelling for the mighty one of Jacob. Now we heard of the ark at Ephaphatha, and found it in the fields of Jaar. Let us enter his dwelling place, and fall low before his footstool. Arise, O Lord, into your resting place, you and the ark of your strength. Let your priests be clothed with righteousness, and your faithful ones sing with joy. For your servant David's sake, turn not away the face of your anointed. The Lord has sworn an oath to David, a promise from which he will not shrink. Of the fruit of your body shall I set upon your throne. If your children keep my covenant and my testimonies, that I shall teach them. Their children shall sit upon your throne for evermore. For the Lord has chosen Zion for himself. He has desired her for his habitation. 
This shall be my resting place forever. Here will I dwell, for I have longed for her. I will abundantly bless her provision. Her poor will I satisfy with bread. I will clothe her priests with salvation, and her faithful ones shall rejoice and sing. There will I make a horn to spring up for David. I will keep a lantern burning for my anointed. As for his enemies, I will clothe them with shame, but on him shall his crown be bright. Arise, O Lord, into your resting place. Jesus, Son of David, make us a priestly people, clothe us in righteousness, make us fruitful, and give us hearts to shout for joy in your salvation. We pray in the power of the Spirit. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our first reading we continue to hear from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verses 58 to the end. If you do not diligently observe all the words of this law that are written in this book, bearing this glorious and awesome name, the Lord your God, then the Lord will overwhelm both you and your offspring with severe and lasting afflictions and grievous and lasting maladies. He will bring back upon you all the diseases of Egypt, of which you were in dread, and they shall cling to you. Every other malady and affliction, even though not recorded in the book of this law, the Lord will inflict on you until you are destroyed. Although once you were as numerous as the stars in heaven, you shall be left few in number, because you did not obey the Lord your God. And just as the Lord took delight in making you prosperous and numerous, so the Lord will take delight in bringing you to ruin and destruction. You will be plucked off the land that you are entering to possess. The Lord will scatter you among the peoples, from one end of the earth to the other. And there you shall serve other gods, of wood and stone, which neither you nor your ancestors have known. Among those nations you shall find no ease, no resting place for the sole of your foot. There the Lord will give you a trembling heart, failing eyes, and a languishing spirit. Your life shall hang in doubt before you. Night and day you shall be in dread, with no assurance of your life. In the morning you shall say, if only it were evening, and at evening you shall say, if only it were morning, because of the dread that your heart shall feel, and the sights that your eyes shall see. The Lord will bring you back in ships to Egypt, by a route that I promised you would never see again. And there you shall offer yourselves for sale to your enemies, as male and female slaves, but there will be no buyer. Here ends our first reading. Song of Moses and Miriam In your unfailing love, O Lord, you led the people whom you have redeemed. Alleluia. I will sing to the Lord, who has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song, and has become my salvation. This is my God whom I will praise, the God of my forebears whom I will exalt. The Lord is a warrior, the Lord is his name. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shatters the enemy. At the blast of your nostrils the sea covered them. They sank as lead in the mighty waters. In your unfailing love, O Lord, you lead the people whom you have redeemed, and by your invincible strength you will guide them to your holy dwelling. You will bring them in and plant them, O Lord, in the sanctuary which your hands have established. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. In your unfailing love, O Lord, you lead the people whom you have redeemed. Alleluia. For second reading, we continue to hear from the first letter of Peter, today reading chapter 5. Now as an elder myself, and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, as well as one who shares in the glory to be revealed, I exhort the elders among you to tend the flock that is in your charge, exercising the oversight not under compulsion, but willingly, as God would have, to have you do it, not for sordid gain, but eagerly. Do not lord it over those in your charge, but be examples to the flock. 
And when the chief shepherd appears, you will win the crown of glory that never fades away. In the same way, you who are younger must accept the authority of the elders. And all of you must clothe yourselves with humility in your dealings with one another. For God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves. Keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary the devil prowls around, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters throughout the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen and establish you. To him be the power for ever and ever. Amen. Through Sylvanus, whom I consider a faithful brother, I have written this short letter to encourage you and to testify that this is the true grace of God. Stand fast in it. Your sister church in Babylon, chosen together with you, sends you greetings. And so does my son Mark. Greet one another with a kiss of love. Peace to all of you who are in Christ. Here ends our second reading. The Benedictus. The Lord is risen from the tomb, who for our sakes hung upon the tree. Alleluia. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Those holy prophets God promised of old, to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. A new child shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation, by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The Lord has risen from the tomb, who for our sakes hung upon the tree, Alleluia. So let us pray. So Lord, we thank you for bringing us safely to the beginning of this day. And as we commemorate the life and work of Gregory Dix today, so we give thanks for his influence over the liturgy that we still use today. For its form, its words, and the way that we are able to use it in worship to glorify you, Lord. As we continue through this time of our vacation days, we pray especially today for those who work on the land and the sea, through their work providing food and what we need. And we pray that around the world there would be good harvests, plenty of food for people to eat, so none may go hungry. As we pray for our world today, we pray most especially for your gift of peace, Lord, be poured out on your holy city of Jerusalem with the conflict that is raging there. We pray for those who have lost their lives and we pray that they would draw back from the brink of open warfare. Lord, help people to lay aside their differences, the differences of faith, the differences of who people are, so that they may be able to live in harmony and peace in that land so blessed by you. We pray for all those areas of the world today where there is warfare and conflict found, for those places that don't make the headlines, for those places that long for peace nonetheless. We pray as we think about those working on the land and on the sea, for those who will go hungry today, for those who will lack clean water, for those who will find themselves refugees in strange lands, 
for those who find themselves without shelter and far from family and friends. Those who are unable to access medicines or education. Lord, we pray for them. We pray for all those who try to alleviate their suffering, for charities and aid workers, and for those who often place themselves in very dangerous and difficult situations in the care and support of your children, Lord. From our prayer intention today, we pray for those who work in food production, processing or distribution, as they manage the complexities of Brexit, as well as producing food in a COVID safe way. Lord, we take for granted how much food that we have and the ease with which we can access it. Help us not to take this for granted and to make sure that there is a fair sharing of the world's resources. We pray for those who will provide food for others today, for those who will cook meals, for those who will be present at the food banks and food larders, helping those who are in need. We pray also for the Darwin Food Share and for the work that they do. We continue to pray for all those who are involved in the fight against this global pandemic. And Lord, we ask that it would come to an end. We pray that we trust in you, Lord, that in the difficult places of our world, the places where there are very high case numbers, where people are suffering and struggling so much, that you are there with them, in the midst of them, holding them and supporting them. We pray for India, for the people there, especially those working in the hospitals who feel totally overwhelmed. We pray for the vaccination programme that people are still working on to try to create more vaccines. And we pray that all people would have access to those vaccinations. And that by being vaccine, vaccinated, we would be able to take steps back to normal life, to be able to do the things that we long to do and be with the people that we miss. As we begin this cautious lifting of more restrictions in our own land, so we pray, Lord, that we would do so with caution and with safety, with care and respect for others. And so we pray today for those who will be going out to work, for our key workers, and for those who will be working from home. We pray for those who are unable to work, those who are furloughed, those whose businesses are not open yet, and those who have sadly lost their employment at this time. We pray for those who struggle financially, who are unsure about the future and the anxieties and fears that that brings. Lord, you bring the peace that only you can give and we pray for that peace to be poured out on those who are weighed down by their worries and fears today. We continue to pray for our young people in education today, in nurseries, schools, colleges and universities and all places of education. We pray for those who teach and for those who keep them safe. And so we pray for those who work across the medical profession in various different roles and responsibilities, caring for us from the cradle to the grave. We pray for those who work in mental health in this Mental Health Awareness Week. We pray for those who work in our local hospitals. We pray for those who work in intensive care units, on the wards, in operating theatres and behind the scenes, and for our hospital chaplains for the work that they do. We pray for those who are so often overlooked within the hospital system, but who provide such vital services. We pray for our hospices and hospice at home, for care homes and sheltered accommodation, nursing and residential homes, and all those who will be able to visit loved ones today. We pray for those who work out in the community as carers, health visitors, district nurses, and the many other things that people need to be able to stay in their own homes with that care and support. We pray for our GP surgeries, pharmacies and health centres, and for all places there will be vaccination hubs today, for those administering vaccines and those who will be receiving them. And so we bring to you, Lord, those we know who are suffering in body, 
mind or spirit, and those who long for your healing touch and that wholeness in their lives. We pray especially for Lisa, David, Alan, Jeff, John, Jim, Elaine, Susan, Kath and her family, Christine, Sister Catherine, Douglas, Steve, Joanna, Jean, Jane, Eric, Baby Thomas, Andrew, Judy, Helen, Scylla, Linda, Oscar, Jack, Baby Erin, Cheryl, Joyce, David and Audrey. Lord, be with them and bring them that healing today. And so we pray for those who have died. We pray for those who've died this past night, for those who've died recently and those whose anniversaries occur at this time. Lord, we ask for your comfort to be upon all those who mourn and who carry that pain of bereavement with them today. We ask that you would surround them with your loving and comforting arms and that you would show them the hope of the resurrection. God, our Redeemer, you have delivered us from the power of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your Son. Grant that as by his death he has recalled us to life, so by his continual presence in us he may raise us to eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the risen Christ grant us the joys of eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank you for joining me for this service of morning prayer today. It's been good to have your company and I'll be down at church in plenty of time for our 10 o'clock service this morning. I'll have a service of evening prayer at 5 o'clock if you're able to join me later on today. And in the meantime, I do hope that you have a good day, whatever today may be bringing you, and that you stay safe, take care of yourselves, and you remain, as always, in my prayers. Do take care.